Good afternoon. This is a special edition of Political Paula Incorrect, which I know a lot of you guys really like. So there's going to be some sarcasm, a little bit of lighthearted comedy, and of course, as always with our show, a message. The topic today is semantics, but it also has to deal with the recent hurricane disaster, Florence. And of course, the hurricane that is the gift that seems to keep on giving, especially for our president, giving him agita, Hurricane Maria. And oh yeah, that country, oh I'm sorry, <laughs> that American territory, Puerto Rico. Geography and semantics. So look, Hurricane Maria was devastating to Puerto Rico. And Hurricane Florence devastated the Carolinas on our mainland. So semantics, the way Donald Trump is talking about who dies of what and how many people are dead, kind of interesting. And it's not new to politicians, by the way, the semantics. So let me give you an example. So an American citizen, a guy in Puerto Rico, dies six weeks after Hurricane Maria. And he dies from complications, cause of death, complications from diabetes. Okay, so Donald Trump says, no, wait a minute, he didn't die in the hurricane. He died because he was diabetic. People with diabetes die every day. So why are you saying that he died in the hurricane? He didn't die in the hurricane, he died of diabetes. He would be dead anyway. Wait, maybe not. See, because to understand this man's situation, you need to work backwards. And I know backwards is a scary thing, believe me. Believe me, I don't know why they put reversing cars and on golf carts and on jet skis or on boats. I don't like going backwards. I used to park the car. If I came home from the groceries or whatever and I could pull into a parking space, great. If I had a back end, I'd double park the damn car, come in and yell for Jason, Jason, come park the car. I don't do reverse. I get it. It's difficult. But it can be done. So let's work backwards with the gentleman citizen in Puerto Rico. So he died from complications of diabetes. What were the complications? He had no insulin. Why did he have no insulin? Because he had no power in his house and the insulin he had spoiled and he couldn't get any more. Why did the power in his house go out for six weeks? Because Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico. You get it? It's like six degrees of Kevin fucking Bacon. It's not rocket science. No Hurricane Maria, no six-week power outage, no spoiled insulin, the dude's alive. Technically, the dude died because of Hurricane Maria. So he counts as a hurricane death. As does anyone else who died in Puerto Rico after the hurricane had long gone and the sun came back out because of lack of medical care, lack of power, lack of clean drinking water, they're dead because of the Maria. They're not just dead. People just don't drop dead. Even on an island where you can say the power grid was shit to begin with. And believe me, we have family. My husband has family in Puerto Rico. They lose power maybe an hour or two a week. They don't lose it for a year. Think about someone in Naples, Florida where Irma hit pretty damn hard. Do you think those people, those rich doctors and lawyers who have their vacation homes in Naples would have lived for two weeks without power, let alone a year? Hell no, they're back, they were back and running. Quick as possible. It's a class thing as well as, yeah, it's an island. It's difficult. It made things more difficult. Here's the other thing though. Is the deaths in Puerto Rico Donald Trump's fault? No. That's going to surprise a lot of you that I said that. No, it's not. And when George W. Bush said, good job, Brownie, during Katrina, well, Brownie wasn't doing a good job. But what is Bush and Trump's fault is that the buck stops here. You are the boss. You're the president of the United States. The people at FEMA work for you. Now, Donald Trump is a successful businessman. If he has a manager 
at one of his properties with his name all over it, Trump this, Trump that, and that manager fucks up. That manager, nobody knows his name. But people are going to start saying, oh, that Trump hotel, that sucks. It's not run right. That hurts Donald Trump's reputation. So Donald Trump's responsibility is to call that guy in and give him a warning and say, you fix this because my reputation, my name's on the line, or you're out, you're fired. So when you say, okay, FEMA's not doing a good job, that's not Trump's fault, but not fixing or getting rid of the people at FEMA that are not doing a good job, that is Trump's fault. And it was Bush's fault. General Honoré, I think all of us remember General Honoré, who was amazing during Katrina. He was the calm after the storm. Because do you remember in Katrina, we watched it on TV. General Honoré goes in there and we have troops pointing rifles at American citizens to calm them down. Honoré said, drop those goddamn weapons. They're American citizens. Oh, my God. Goosebumps. I still get goosebumps. You do not point rifles at American citizens. They are disaster victims, and you never blame the victim for being the victim of a disaster, no matter what. I love General Honoré. I hope one day he will run for office, to be honest with you. But see, it's all about the semantics. There was a young infant that was killed in, I think it's North Carolina. A tree fell on his house while he slept in his crib. Will Donald Trump call that crib death? Of course not. He died because the hurricane made a tree fall on his house. Semantics. I think we'll all remember the best use of semantics, the best diplomat, the best president that ever used was Bill Clinton. Do you remember this? It depends on what your definition of ease is. And I want you to listen to me. I did not have sex with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. Like, Hillary, I don't even know her first name. I, I don't know anything about this. Now, look, that is semantics. And it's also a man versus woman thing. Do you really think that Monica Lewinsky didn't believe that she was having sex with the president of the United States? Of course she did. But Bill Clinton's like, no, 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 I just got a blowjob. She sucked my dick. I, I didn't cheat. That's not cheating. That's not sex. It's kind of like a man comes home after work and his wife is like, you're a little late tonight, honey. Where'd you go after work? Oh, yeah, I went and got a blowjob on my way home. Oh, great, baby. I hope it was good. Did you have a good time? Oh, and by the way, the pool man, yeah, he went down on me uh, before he left. And, you know, it's like, uh, okay. You know, a man will say, oh, shit, there's algae in the pool. I want to take my evening swim. Well, baby, he was busy. He was, you know, going down on me. He didn't have time to clean the pool. Well, goddamn. Well, I hope you had fun because now I can't take a swim. A woman will lose her fucking mind. What do you mean? Well, baby, I didn't have sex. It was just a blowjob. No, no, no. Think about it, you married ladies out there. Is your husband cheating on you if he lets a woman, not you, give him a blowjob? Damn straight. But again, it's semantics. It's how people view things. And I really feel sorry for Donald Trump in this one way is because he is the worst winner that I think that in the history of this country, he's the worst winner I've ever seen. And I've, I've gone to tournaments. I've played in dark tournaments and cornhole. He is the worst freaking winner. He is the president of the best country in the world. And he's not happy because, well, they're saying that like nobody came to my inauguration. Who the fuck cares? You're the president of the best country in the world. And you know, he should feel insecure. You know, there we all know them. There's people that are so insecure. You can go up to someone and say, oh, wow, Susie, I, I love your hair. Oh, yeah, but I have bags under my eyes. Instead of just saying thank you. Or I really love that dress. Yeah, but you know what? I used to wear a size 6 and now I'm in a 10 and... I just gained so much weight. 
there are people who are so insecure that even when they win, they didn't win big enough. And he didn't win big. Trump did not win big. More people voted for her, for Hillary, than voted for Trump. And that gives him the agita every single day. So much so, he can't enjoy his win. He shouldn't care that more people voted for her. I'll tell you who he should care about, though. He should care about me and the millions of majority people who voted for her. He should care about us. Because he doesn't have to prove anything to the people who are going to vote for him no matter what because he's got an R next to his name. And because he's pro-life and anti-gay and all this other crap Republicans need to do to pass their litmus test. He needs to prove something to the majority of people who voted for her. He should care about me. He should care about Democrats, independents, people who were so frustrated with the political process they didn't even vote in 2016. He should care about all of us. And yeah, he should care about those American citizens down in Puerto Rico too. Because he has to prove himself to us. We are his responsibility now, whether we voted for him or not. Whether we like it or not, he's our president, and the buck stops with him. So yes, he needs to care about my financial welfare. He needs to care about my health care. Because I didn't vote for him. And I would love to be proven wrong. But he needs to step up to the plate and prove to me that I didn't, that I made a mistake when I voted for her. And he hasn't done it yet. And it's about time that he does. It's about time that he get a thicker skin. He's a successful businessman. You would think he could take criticism and let it brush off his skin. After all, he's the president of the best country in the entire world. And yet he revisits the election. He revisits the inauguration. He calls news people fake. If he could ignore 95% of his critics, which I do on this show almost on a daily basis, he might find that he changes some people's minds. That people that voted for her might say, yeah, you know what, he's doing a good job. But he can't let it go. This insecurity, like the fat little kid that grew up never being picked for the team or being picked last for the team. That's how he acts. Little analogy. I used to play in dark tournaments a lot. So occasionally I would win one. And if they had an award show, if I won, if say, I, say I won an award for this show and I invited tons of people to come and only three people showed up to support me when I got my award. Would I cry about it? Would I be disappointed? Hell no. Say it was a $25,000 cash award and a trophy. Guess what? I don't care who the hell shows up in the audience. I'm taking home my money and I'm taking home my trophy. And guess what? The trophy's going right up on a big shelf so that anyone who walks in my house that didn't show up for the show, guess what? Look, look what I want. I still won. I get to look at that trophy every fucking day. And say, I'm the best. I won an award. And look at this money I get to spend now. Oh, my. I'll send them pictures from Greece. You didn't want to show up for my award show. Well, you didn't get to come to Greece with us either. Because we took the three people who came to the award show to support me. We took them to Greece with us. Since we have all this money now that I won. Being the best. Because I'm the best. That's how you handle that kind of shit. Winning is winning. Nobody can take that away from you. The Eagles right now are not doing well, the Philadelphia Eagles in football. But guess what? They are still Super Bowl champs. They will always be the 2018 Super Bowl champs. That's never going to go away. Will it be disappointing if they have a losing season? Yes, but you can't take the Super Bowl away. You can't take the ring off their fingers. Winning is winning, and Donald Trump needs to understand. You are the president. Start acting like it. 
And that means you don't call a diabetic dude in Puerto Rico death from diabetes when he really died because Hurricane Maria shut power off. The American government, FEMA, didn't restore it quickly enough and the dude died because he couldn't get his medication. Just admit it, a lot of people died. You didn't kill them. The hurricane and its aftermath killed them and maybe bad management at an organization that you are supposed to oversee. Now, you can fix that for future. Like General Honore said, learn from your mistakes. Learn from what happened in Maria so it doesn't happen again. I hope, I think we learned lessons from Katrina. I know we learned lessons from Katrina about letting pets go into the shelters. In Katrina, they weren't allowed to. Many people died because they would not leave their pets. Police officers were shooting people's pets in front of them, and they now you can evacuate. We need you out of here because we don't want to come after rescue you. Now, most shelters accept pets in these dire circumstances. That's a big difference, and that's a lesson learned. Learn from your mistakes. Try not to repeat them. Clean up the bad apples at FEMA and at other agencies that you oversee, and that's doing your job, Mr. Trump. That's being a good president. That's being a winner. You. And again, please remember that rich, poor, Democrat, Republican, independent, non-voter, from an infant to an 18-year-old to an 85-year-old, wherever they live in America, you better give a shit about all of us. We are your responsibility, and it's huge. And if you didn't want the job, you shouldn't have applied for the job. To everybody down in the Carolinas who are cleaning up after this horrible last six days who still don't have power, our prayers go, go to you, and I hope that our government will be there for you, as they should be, because our government has been there for other countries, real other countries, Haiti, Japan, Thailand. We send billions when they have natural disasters. And it's time we take care of our own, the way we always run and take care of other countries. Those are real other countries, by the way. It's just a geography lesson. Haiti is another country. Japan is another country. Thailand, another country. Again, I don't know if they teach geography in school anymore, so especially my young viewers. Those are other countries. Puerto Rico, not a country. And by the way, uh, just in case anybody's confused, and I know this because I married into a very proud Puerto Rican family. Mr. Trump, Puerto Ricans aren't Mexican. And Puerto Ricans aren't Cuban. Just another little hint for you. They're not from Guatemala. They're not Ecuadorian. They're, they're American. They're Puerto Ricans, but they're Americans. And yes, they speak Spanish. But they're American. And Puerto Rico is not a country. Maybe it should be. Maybe they'd do a lot better if they could ditch the America part. Other countries that are not American seem to be doing pretty damn well. And isn't that sad? Political Paula, out.